Uh, having seen that uh, people are not so different from each other, whether they are located in US or they are in Turkey, uh, did the trip reinforce your hopes about establishing world peace in the future? One can only hope. Uh, we work towards it, especially as an educator and a philosopher. It's part of my own um, mission, if you will, to try to beat down the, the, the barriers that ignorance, in particular, seems to be all too capable of producing. And I think that it is uh, a, a, a genuine and important mission that the IED is engaged in, in terms of trying to open the lines of communication. I mean, the dialogue itself, dialogos, meaning an exchange of reasons from a philosophical sense, that it has got to be the point of departure. We've got to understand each other. And it's not just academic understanding or something out of books. Uh, it is something that is a product of experience itself. And Thomas Merton, the great uh, Trappist monk and, and spiritualist of the 20th century, for many Christians, Thomas Merton says that, uh, that belief often tends to produce uh, proclamations, whereas, dialogue, uh, whereas experience tends to produce dialogue. And so I think it's very, very important for the kind of things that IID is doing to create the avenues of communication. And that very much is something that happens on the experiential level. And so getting out, seeing, doing, you know, dining with people, praying with people was something that I found uh, much more uh, conducive to uh, understanding than simply reading about it in a book. And so it was uh, something that I think is, is being done very effectively. Uh, however, there, unfortunately, there's a recent caricature of Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, which depicted him in a horrible way and it basically raised uh, disappointments in the Muslim world and uh, some violence, unfortunately, which cannot be justified by any means. Uh, do you think this type of like uh, journalism, irresponsible journalism, may widen the gap between people of faith? Unfortunately, there are uh, dangers um, and freedom inevitably is a two-edged sword and unfortunately we seem to be <laughs> cutting ourselves in the process. It is uh, a very sad indictment of, of many people's decision-making capabilities. I for one cannot condone at all the uh, blasphemy, if you will, that goes along with that kind of, of publication. There's no need for it. I mean it's not something that advances any noble cause whatsoever. And so I think that uh, some serious mistakes were made and unfortunately as a result of those mistakes uh, a lot of people are suffering. And so I, I you know, as a Westerner, I, you know, I, I hate to apologize for, for uh, cultural misconduct, but I think that it's important that Islamic peoples everywhere know that that there are many in this country and probably throughout the world who are as sympathetic uh, for their legitimate concerns as, as we are. Uh, this is uh, really quite out of line. And uh, everything that I know about uh, Mohammed, and peace be upon him, uh, is very much an advocate of, of peace and, and the genuineness of his ideas has no place being made fun of in the manner that the cartoon seems to imply. How would you describe Prophet Muhammad in your own words, like, which, which, is, which contradicts with the, with the <laughs> caricatures that you <laughs> see? Well, I perhaps am, am less orthodox in my own religious training and inclinations than many and confessed regularly to many while we were in Turkey, particularly to sponsors. We had a number of very genuine discussions that uh, 
I tend also to agree with, with Islamic traditional designations of Jesus as a prophet. And so the notion of, of spokesman for God or spokesman for the Lord or for Allah is something that I feel very comfortable with as a notion and I think the the sublimity of the message of Muhammad is something that unfortunately Westerners uh, feel discomfiture about uh, because they put blinders on themselves with their own religious suppositions if you will that uh, their notions of, of propriety and, and having appropriated a, a single line of religious interpretation is something that does not uh, advance toleration of other people's viewpoints in spite of much of the rhetoric of, of Westerners uh, in that regard. And so I, I think that that Westerners in particular need to be much more reasonable and tolerant and open to other people's perspectives in regard to Islam in general and in terms of the true message of the Prophet. And uh, what's your, like, if you want to describe Prophet Muhammad, how would you describe him as a man? Well, we learned a lot, a lot, um, both through our sponsors and through a lot of the discussions that we had. Uh, uh, we had some very, very powerful philosophical discussions at several of the sponsors' houses. It was a, a delight to see uh, how it was not an exchange of trivialities or uh, polite talk, but often we would cut directly to the chase and would wrestle with very, very serious issues, meaningful issues, uh, the sort of, of concerns that would often bring both parties to tears because we were you know, ready to embrace uh, uh, as we were finding common ground. And so we learned a lot and I think one of the things of, that I took away with me in regards to the Prophet Muhammad is that he had a sense of humor. And this is one of the things that uh, unfortunately is, is not a characteristic of Christianity in many of its uh, traditions is you know, God doesn't laugh, doesn't seem to find anything very funny in, in uh, most Judeo-Christian sensibilities, but Muhammad seems to have delighted in life and he came across as a very genuine human being in all the presentations that we heard of him. And so I have uh, a lot of learning to do. It was a, a process of learning what I have to learn, and so it was opening doors. Uh, did it affect your spiritual journey? Like, can we say also it's, it was a spiritual journey for you? It was very much so a spiritual journey, and uh, my wife uh, and I have taken spiritual journeys. Uh, we have followed the path of the pilgrimage route all the way to Santiago de Compostela, and have. Uh, participated in, in many rituals uh, in Western European practices in terms of, of church uh, traditions. But this was, uh, this was kind of expanding the parameters of spirituality on the one hand and literally the physical journey itself going to places that you never in your wildest dreams thought you were going to get to see. Uh, in particular going to a place like Haran or to Urfa was uh, something that one can even imagine doing. And so this was uh, a very, very um, uplifting experience in terms of seeing uh, a, a different part of life itself. And so it was very, very uh, satisfying. Personally, we can't wait to go back. 